For apart from you, we can do nothing, O oh God. Thank you so much for this opportunity that once again, we come together to worship you, to listen to your word. Hallelujah. And Lord, we are, uh, we are ready, O oh God. Hallelujah. To be transformed. Hallelujah. By your word this morning, O oh God. Lord, allow the power of your Holy Spirit to minister in our midst right now. Hallelujah. And we rebuke every work of the enemy in this place. Every destruction that the enemy has been uh, putting in this place in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, give us an, a keen mind, a receptive heart, and a spirit of understanding that every word of yours, hallelujah, that we are going to hear this morning, hallelujah, will transform our lives. Hallelujah. And we will depart this place, never be the same again, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Sino po sa inyo dito ang... Uh, ah, kalimutan ko. English pala ngayon. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, who, who among you here? Oh, this morning. Or trying to reduce their weight? Or trying to... <laughs> or, or trying to maintain their uh, slim body? Oh? Th those people who are... Uh, 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 so, uh, too conscious for their uh, weight and their uh, body shape. Okay? Amen? So we can, uh, all of us uh, can relate. Amen? But the thing is, we want to reduce our weight. We want to maintain our, our sexy body. But we, we cannot let go our burgers, our ice cream, our cakes, no? our delicious food, we cannot let them go. Amen? Not, not this time. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> Maybe some other day. Okay? So this is the reality. And this is how people respond to Jesus. Some people want Jesus. They want Jesus in their lives. They want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But the problem is, they want it without any sacrifice. They don't want to sacrifice anything. They want Jesus, but they don't want to deny themselves. They don't want to let go the things of their old person. All personality. But this time, in our text, Jesus gave us no other option. If you read in Matthew 16, verse 24, if you have your Bible, then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So, three things. If you want to be disciple of Jesus, if you want to follow Jesus, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Him. So they are connected. If you want Jesus, you must practice self-denial. Take up your cross and follow Him. That's why this morning, we're going to talk about absolute surrender. Amen? So when we talk about surrender, sometimes we look at it as negative. No? Negative, uh, negative word or negative, uh, what do you call this? Impact in our lives. No? Sometimes surrender means to us we are a loser. 
We are the weakest link. Or sometimes surrender to us, it means we are powerless. But surrender to God means victory for our lives. We're not, we're not talking here about surrender in a battle or uh, uh, surrender, to, uh, surrender to your wife. Now we're talking here about surrender to God. Amen? So surrender means to give up or to let go everything for the sake of God. Let's give, give everything, everything in our lives to God. For the sake of knowing Him more and more. For the sake of serving Him to the best of our ability. To the best of our strength. Not only we serve Him when we are already weak. But we serve Him when we are still have time. When we are still strong. We don't, we, we don't want to wait until... We are already bedridden. Lord, I will serve you. How can you serve? You are already bedridden. It means to yield yourself to God's purpose. Yielding oneself. We are offering our lives to Jesus so that He can use us mightily. It means to relinquish your right in your life. So when we talk about absolute surrender, it encompasses many words. We can see there submission. We can see obedience. We can see humility. Self-denial. And taking up your cross. So all these words were included in the word surrender. There's a difference between self-denial and taking up your cross. So in our text, it says there, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. So it is a different thing, a separate thing. So the difference between self-denial and taking up your cross is when we say taking up your cross, it means cross is a representation of crucifixion. It represents our sins. It represents our uh, sinful, uh, sinful nature or sinful habits. So what does it mean when, when God says take up your cross? It means you nail every sinful Things, sinful matters, sinful habits in your life. Every day, you need to nail it to the cross. This sinful nature must be crucified in ourselves. So on the other hand, on the other hand, self-denial is the deliberate curtailing of healthy passions and desires for the sake of pursuing Jesus all the more. What does it mean? Just like my illustration a while ago. You know, food is good. Okay? There's nothing, uh, uh, nothing wrong if you eat burger, if you eat ice cream, if you eat something. No. But if you want to pursue Jesus harder, then you need to deny yourselves, deny yourselves from Oversleep, deny yourselves from excessive food, no, deny yourself from uh, uh, spending uh, too much time in your telenovela. Okay? I'm not saying that when you watch telenovela, you are sinning, but spending too much time with telenovela or teleserie rather than spending quality time with Jesus, you are not denying yourselves, you are feeding yourselves. 
You know that you have high blood pressure, but you keep on eating pork. You know that you have sugar, but you, you always eat sweets, no? cakes, ice cream. You're not denying yourselves. Those, so it means self-denial means it's not necessarily sin, sinful things, but ordinary things in our lives that we need. But not in excessive. We should not practice it in excess. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So sometimes we need to reduce you know, our, our time you know, is that we spend on other things. Maybe in recreation, in entertainment, maybe in social media. And we spare a quality time with Jesus. Amen? That is absolute surrender. When we deny ourselves and we take up our cross and follow Him. So we, we will learn uh, three lessons from absolute surrender. Absolute, number one, absolute surrender is a choice. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo. Tell your neighbor, absolute surrender is a choice. Amen. Choice. Okay. Hallelujah. It is, it is a choice. No? God is not forcing you to surrender or to yield yourselves to Him. God is not forcing you to serve Him. God is not forcing you to commit your life unto Him. It is your choice. Amen. Hallelujah. There is uh, one story in the Old Testament that is found in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 to 9. No? I'll just read it for you. No? Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, Why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. So these lepers, they, they have uh, decided by themselves, if we stay here, we will die. If we go to the city, there is famine. We will die. There's no other option. We just wait and die. But they take the risk. They took the risk. No? They took the risk of, go, of surrendering and see if they will be spared or they will be killed. No? So what happens next? In verse 5 it says, at, at dusk they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. No? For the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said to one another, no? so those Aramean soldiers, they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and the Egyptians, no? Egyptian kings, to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dust and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. No? They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. So, so the lepers, no? the men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. And they took silver, gold, and clothes and went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took something from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, what we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let, let us go at once and report this to the royal palace. You see, they decided to surrender. No? They are gambling for their lives. If they will be spared, they will live. But if they will be killed, they will die. But you know the consequences of their 
uh, the result of their decision to surrender overflowing blessing when they reach the camp no one is the enemy has already already fled because god made them to fled amen? amen god ordained that some uh, some uh, uh, chariots or some horses of great army no that the arameans will hear about this powerful army and they said to one another it's better to flee than to die because the, the, the king of Israel has hired these Hittites and Egyptian kings to attack us. So when the, these lepers reach the camp, it is overflowing blessing. Amen? So what is the lesson that we can learn from these lepers? There is a blessing in surrender. Amen? There is a blessing in surrender. Like these lepers, we have a choice. To do nothing in this life and just wait until we die. And let's see what will happen. But we have also a choice whether to put our lives, to put our whole trust on Jesus and experience His abundant life. We have a choice if we yield ourselves for God's purpose so that we will experience the inner joy that comes in serving Him. So we have a choice. It is your choice to choose whether you submit yourselves to God or just do nothing. But these lepers, they choose the right thing. They choose to surrender and they leave. Amen? Now you have the choice. If God is calling you right now, you can wholeheartedly submit yourselves or just simply do nothing. And definitely, if you do nothing, you will die. But if you submit yourselves to God, you will live. Because those who, who, uh, who love their lives will lose it. But those who let go their lives for God's sake will find it. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have a choice to trust Jesus. But many people, because there's, there's only two options, two choices in this world. Either you submit yourselves to God or you submit yourselves to other things or to other people. So many people surrender themselves to worldly things. Some surrendered their life to drugs. Some surrendered to lust of the flesh. Some people surrendered their life to money, you know, wealth, possession. And some surrendered their lives to fame or popularity. They want to be great in this world. So they invested their lifetime to gain fame, to be famous, to gain popularity. And you know what? If you surrender your lives to these things, they will become your master. They will control your lives. They will direct the dire direction of your life. They, they, they will direct your path. They will uh, influence every decision that you're going to make. If you are greedy for money, if you are greedy for food, greedy for wealth, you know, greedy for possession, or, or greedy for uh, fame or popularity, all these things will control your life. All these things will bring you to nothing. Because these things are just temporary. These worldly things are just temporary. Amen? But God's promise is eternal. Amen? Amen? So, when you surrender 
to these things, your life has no direction. You will end up being destroyed. At the end of the day, you will, your life will become miserable. Because true freedom is found only in one person, and that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. If the Son sets you free, then you will be free indeed. Amen. But when you surrender your life to Jesus, He will direct your path into a fulfilling life, into a satisfactory life. I am not talking about a problem-free life, but definitely, when you surrender your life unto Jesus, I assure you, you will not be put to shame. Amen? He will give you eternal life, eternal rewards. He will lead you into victory in this life. Amen? Hallelujah. But sometimes there are things that hinder hinder us in surrendering our, surrendering our life unto the hands of Jesus. No? And that one, one of the things that hinder us is we said to ourselves, we have the right over our lives. No? I have the right to do whatever I wanted to do in my life. I have the right to do what pleases me in this life. I, w I have the right to be happy. But God is not after your happiness, but He is after your conformity to His holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7.23, if we are saying that we have the right to our lives, here's what Paul says. You were bought at a price do not become slaves of human beings. We are both at a price. It is not a cheap price, but it costs the life and blood of Jesus. It's priceless. In other verse, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, this is what it says, You are not your own, but you, are, you were both at a price. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Who said that we have the right over our lives? We are bought at a price. We no longer own our lives, but we owe our lives to Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another reason why some people are hesitant to yield their life to Jesus is fear. They fear it will become a loss for them. If they commit their life unto Jesus. Some people doesn't want to commit themselves to God. Maybe because they will lose something. Or maybe their priority is not God. Their priority is to accumulate wealth, to accumulate possession. That's why some, some people, at the first time they uh, knew Jesus, they decided to follow Him. But along the way, problems and trials come. And they said, Lord, If this is what it cost me to follow you, bye-bye. No. Sorry, Lord, but I, I'm done. But hear what Paul said in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 11. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. No. Anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. You will never be disappointed. You will never be discouraged. 
Because God is our is our knowing God. He knows what is best for you. He knows how to bless you. He knows how to provide for you. He knows how to deliver you from any situation or any circumstances that is too difficult for you. So if there's one person whom you can entrust your whole life, it is the person of Jesus Christ. Simply because He is all-knowing God. He knows He knows yourselves. He knows ourselves. He knows our lives better than we know. He knows where, where we're going to end up. He knows the results of our decisions. He knows the consequences of our bad decisions. He is all-knowing. Nothing is hidden from Him. So if you want to yield yourselves to a person, it should be to the right person. And that is Jesus Christ alone. Amen? Amen. Ang hina ng amen. Ayun. Okay, so migaw. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> We're not going to surrender our life to any other religious person no, in this world. Because every other religious figure in this world, they died and they remain, de remain dead. But Jesus, our Lord and Savior, He died. He died for us. He died for you and me. And He rose again for you and me. And he, now, He is a living God. He is not a dead God, but He is a living God. Amen? Our God is a living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if there's one great decision you know, that you could ever make in your life is when you decided to surrender your life to Jesus. You know what? All the leaders and servants in this church are volunteers. Nobody or no one here is a full-time ministry workers or servants. No. We are all volunteer. We decided to serve Him. We decided to commit our lives in serving Him no matter what. Sometimes, the easiest thing to, de to do in our Christian life is to serve Him, stand here, and receive the clap offering of God, and receive appreciation from God, receive recognition from our leaders. That's, that's an easy thing to do. But the, but the hardest thing that we can do is serving Him, standing here, serving in the ministry, serving Him in His vineyard, and no one is noticing you. No one is recognizing you. No one is appreciating you. That is a poor thing. But that's what God is looking for. Whether there is recognition, whether there is appreciation, whether people is clapping at you, you are serving Him with all your might, with all your heart. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And I praise God because all the leaders and servants in this church, whether there are, there are recognitions, whether there, there is, uh, uh, or whether there were not recognitions or appreciations, they are serving, they are yielding themselves in the service of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hindi po tayo naghahanap ng palakpak. 
Amen? Kung papalakpak man tayo, palakpak para sa Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know, the first time my mother saw me uh, when she came here last 2018. So the first time uh, she saw me preaching the word face to face. At the end of the at the end of the service, he uh, he hugged me, and I can feel that it's like, son, I'm proud of you. Even he uh, she she didn't tell me expressly, but I can feel by her hug that she's proud of me, Amen. preaching the word of God to the people. Hallelujah! Glory to God. When I graduated in elementary as salutatorian, I don't feel that kind of hug. When I graduated in high school, first honorable mention, I didn't feel that kind of hug. When I graduated, in college as magna, I, no, 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 it's not magna, okay. When I graduated in college, I didn't feel that hug. Oh. Although he hugged me, but it seems it's just uh, nothing uh, yeah, abnormal. There's nothing abnormal. No? It's just simple. When I passed the CPA board exam, I didn't feel that kind of hug. But when I preached the word of God, when I decided to commit myself to God and preach His word, I feel that fulfilling hug. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy birthday to my mother. <laughs> birthday niya po kahapon. Amen. So happy birthday to my dear mother. Hallelujah. So that embrace means to me everything. Hallelujah. How much more the God that we are serving when we come to Him face to face will we hear from Him well done, good and faithful servant. Come and dine with me. Are we longing to hear that word when we come face to face with our Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. Here po mag pitch amen. Naka ready po ako. Praise the Lord. So, when you surrender your life absolutely, or absolute surrender unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you, know, you will not be put to shame. Hallelujah. The second thing, the second lesson that we learn from absolute surrender is absolute surrender is complete or unconditional. When uh, Abraham is called to offer his son Isaac in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 3, it says, After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, Here, here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. 
So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Here is Abraham. He is called to be the father of all nations. God promised him to be the father of all nations. But when he got a son, Isaac, of course, only the legitimate son. His only, that's why God, his only son. He said his only son. Because he is the son of promise. When God gave him this son, and now God is taking back Isaac, God is asking uh, Abraham to sacrifice his only son. What did Abraham do? Did? No. What did he do? He did not complain. He did not hesitate. He did not say, Lord, you promised me to be the father of many nations. That my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, children will be as, uh, more as the sands on the sea. As many as the stars. And now you are taking my only son? Abraham didn't say that. Without hesitation, he obeyed God. And that is a sign of absolute surrender. No complaint, no hesitation. It is a total obedience. When Jesus calls his disciples, he said, come follow me. And immediately they left everything. They left their profession. They left their father, their parents, who are working in, in this uh, uh, fishing uh, business. They left, they left everything for Jesus. That is a sign of absolute or total surrender. When Moses, when God called him to deliver the Jews from, from the slavery in Egypt, in Exodus chapter 4, verse, four uh, verse 2 to 3, Moses in his encounter with God. It says in verse 2, Then the Lord said to, to him, What is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? No. Then Moses replied, A staff. Tungkod. Then God said to him, The Lord said to Moses, Throw it on the ground. No. Throw it on the ground. Then Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. But after that, God told him, take it again. And he took again. He took by the, uh, by the tail and it became a staff again. And that is a sign of surrender. What is in your hand? Give it to me. Throw it to the ground. Today, what is in your hands that you cannot throw to the ground, that you cannot let go, that you cannot give up to God so that you will experience the miracle of God in your lives? What is it that you are, you keep gripping on that thing that you cannot give up to the Lord? Hallelujah. If you want to experience the miracle of God, be ready. To release what is in your hands that you are valuing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the best example of absolute or complete surrender is no other than Jesus. In Philippians, Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, it says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. By becoming obedient to death, even 
to the death on the cross. Jesus gave everything. Jesus left his heaven's glory. He came as a man. He came as a servant. He came to sacrifice his life for us. He chose to do it because he saw ahead of time that if he will not do it, we will be destined to condemnation. We will be destined to eternal damnation. And that's why he chose to sacrifice himself. He gave everything. He gave his all in all for our sake. So what hinders you, my dear brothers and sisters, that we cannot give our all in all to glorify our Savior? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did not hesitate to come down in human flesh and sacrifice himself for a sinner like us, like me and you. There's no reservation. I'm, I'm enjoying my glory here in heaven. Why should I come down there for those sinful creation? But God, in His unconditional love, in His mercy, in His grace, He sent His only begotten Son. He sent, Jesus came down and gave Himself voluntarily. Not compulsory. He gave Himself voluntarily. We are not serving a God who was murdered. We are serving a Savior who voluntarily give up himself to death. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the song says, I surrender some. I surrender some. Is that what the, the song said? All. Everything. All to Jesus, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Complete, unconditional. And I realize that when I surrender, I submit my life unto Jesus. It's not only my life, even my secret sin, even my bad habits, even my vices, even my pride, everything, we need to surrender it to God. Kaya ang awit kong minsan, kunin mo na ang lahat sa akin, wag lang ang aking mahal. No. But God, God requires one thing from us, one thing from you and me. It is your all. Amen? Your all, your everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen? Are you learning something this morning? Amen? Hallelujah. Last but not the least, absolute surrender is consistent. Absolute surrender is consistent. It does not happen every Friday. No? When the pastors uh, make an altar call, when the pastors pray for you, when we sing, I surrender all. No? And then after, after the service, you will take back again. And you will live your own life the rest of the week. <clears throat> it should be consistent. In the parallel verse of our text, in Luke 9:23, this is what it says. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them all, "Whoever wants to be my disciple, 
must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. Not only Friday. Not only Sunday. Take up their cross daily and follow me. So absolute surrender, surrender does not happen overnight. It not, it's not only Friday. It's not only uh, every time we are in the church or not. Every time that we come to worship. But every day of our lives. It should be consistent in every day of our lives. So it is an ongoing process. No, while we are still living in this flesh, we continue to surrender anything that is not godly in our lives. Amen? Galatians 2.20 Galatians 2.20 says, Hallelujah. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Are we living our lives on our own? For our own? For our purpose? For our benefits? Or are we living it for Jesus. Hallelujah. A true disciple of Jesus, a true follower of Jesus, makes a decision every day to deny himself and choose Jesus. Yes, Lord. Anything, anytime, anywhere. Count me in. That is absolute surrender. It should be consistent. Not only when you feel you like it, but even when you feel you doesn't like it. Even when you are in weakness, even when you are in trials, just yield yourselves to God. Because God will honor those people who are in brokenness. Those people who are in total weakness. Because God says, for in weaknesses. Sabi niya? My grace is sufficient for you. For in weaknesses, my strength is uh, perfected. In weaknesses, my strength is perfected. So when you are, when you are a weak, you are strong in the Lord. God can move mightily. God can use you effectively. Whether in your ministry, whether in uh, serving uh, uh, Him with other, to other people, whether in uh, uh, being a witness, to other people. God will use you mightily when you are wholeheartedly surrendered. Amen? Hallelujah. In closing, I would like to read in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I would like all of us to read this uh, text. This is scripture. Amen? Can you see in the screen? Can you read it? Amen? Amen? Parang yung iba hindi marunong magbasa. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So, basahin po natin, no? And let's read all together. Amen. One, two, three, and. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Amen. Sa ibang salin, sa ibang version, it says, this is your spiritual act of worship. Amen? Hallelujah. It says, therefore, 
what it is there for. If you read from chapter 1 to 11, if you read chapter 1 to 11, you can see the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God that He put out upon us. You can read the unconditional love of God. Hallelujah. And that's why He said here, Therefore, I urge you. Apostle Paul said, I urge you, I strongly encourage you, brothers and sisters. And he didn't stop there. In view of God's mercy. That's what in chapter 1 and 11, we can see God's mercy and grace. In view of that, God's mercy and grace. What says? To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And this is your true and proper worship. No. Why God's mercy? Why in view in God's mercy? Whether you like it or not, everything that you have at the moment, right now, whether that is a trial, whether that is a problem, whether that is hard, uh, difficulties in life, whether it's a blessing, whether it is a promotion, whatever you have, it is because of God's mercy. Amen. Amen. You are experiencing problem. You are experiencing trials because you are still alive by God's mercy. He gave you life. The only person who are not experiencing problems and trials in life are those who are six feet under the ground. No more. Class. They're done. So the truth of the matter why you are experiencing everything right now is because of God's mercy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So maybe there were some people who are sitting right now in this congregation whom God is calling to surrender himself or herself to Jesus. It's between you and God. But one thing I can assure you that the moment that you surrender your life to Jesus wholeheartedly, you will never be put to shame. You will never regret the decision. You will never disappoint it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be like Jonah, Prophet Jonah who ran, who tried to run from his calling. Maybe God is calling some of us here who are here already for a long time. God is calling you to serve Him in the ministry. God is calling you to be His witness to the people around you. God is calling you to share the good news to your family, to your loved ones. I assure you one thing. You cannot run from the calling of God in your lives. Amen? For the gift and calling of God are irrevocable. Hallelujah. You cannot run like Jonah. Jonah tried to run from his calling. But God bring him back. Amen? Amen? Don't wait that you're going to be swallowed by a big fish. Amen? Here's the time that you need, you decide to yield yourselves unto Jesus unconditionally. It is your choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I close in prayer, let's sing this song. Of my soul, I could.
confide in you through all my darkest moments. Hallelujah. In you I find my peace, my comfort when I'm weak. Yes, Lord. Just in you, storm and raging sea. Faithful. You're the glory and the lifter of my hand. Your life within my days. It leads me in your ways. Forever I surrender all to you. The lyrics of the song it says, I give all to be with you. Can we gamble the things of this world, the happiness of this world, in exchange for that eternal reward to be with Jesus in his kingdom? That is not comparable. The glory that is awaiting us in eternity is beyond comprehension, beyond comparison. Nothing in this world is worth more than the glory that is awaiting us in eternity. Hallelujah. Can we sing once again? Sing it from your heart and sing it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Savior of my soul. Savior of my soul, I confide in you, God. I confide in you through all my darkest moments. In you I find my peace, my comfort when I'm weak. I trust in you through the storm and raging sea. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to God. Oh, 
worship you, Lord. And I live to worship you, my Jesus. Hallelujah. My Jesus, you the only one for me. Nothing will ever take your place, my precious Savior. And who can stand between? You see those hands who are lifting, who are lifted unto you, for you, oh God. Hallelujah. Those hands that are lifted towards you. Hallelujah. Lord, it's a sign of our surrender. Hallelujah. Lord, we cannot do it on our own. Hallelujah. But by your grace and mercy, Lord, once again. Hallelujah. We want, Lord, we want you to help us to completely surrender our lives our will, our plans, hallelujah, our ways. Lord, all these things help us to surrender everything, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that you will be glorified, you will be magnified in our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, once again, we are offering this life that you have given us and use it for your glory alone. Lord, we ask for forgiveness. That there were times, hallelujah, that during our ministry, that during serving in your ministry, sometimes we look at our accomplishment. Sometimes we look at people if they recognize us or if they appreciate us. Lord, we're so sorry. Because there's only one that we, we should put our focus. There's only audience that knows everything what we are doing. And whether we are doing this for ourselves or we are doing this for His glory. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, your thumbs up is more than enough for us, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, right now, we renew our commitment Hallelujah. And we, once again, we commit our lives, Lord, and use it for your glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. For touching our hearts, for touching our lives, for transforming our lives this morning, oh God. And we will leave this place, never be the same again. Hallelujah. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. This we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters.